How's it going everybody? Adam here from Maple Monkey Media. We're here right in front of the garden and if you've been a continued follower you know or maybe have forgotten that we've started our, our straw bale gardening. This was the first year that we've done straw bale gardening and uh, I'll turn the camera around here in a second but what this video is going to be is just going to be the uh, the advantages, disadvantages of straw bale gardening. So if that entices you stick along, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into this video. Woo! All right so here is our garden area, one of our garden areas. But this is the area we did our straw bales. So you can see them right there. And obviously you can see how lush and green everything is. So, you know, straw bales has its advantages and has its disadvantages. We also have some straw bales that we put in the center of the greenhouse here. If I can fit in, because everything is exploded. So we have some more straw bales coming back here into the back here also doing great what is it max so the greenhouse is just a lush jungle so some of the advantages of doing the straw bale gardening is you see here that it almost acts as if it's a small raised bed so you don't have to bend over as much you see I'm standing up right here and I don't have to bend down and uh, you know the plants are, are up to my chest already. So that makes it easier for your back and easier for weeding and stuff like that. Doing these straw bales is also good if you're limited on space or if you don't have any area that has good ground. So what you could do is if you have um, pavement or a cement yard of some sort, driveway, you could set these straw bales into the ground, onto the pavement, onto the cement, and you could plant directly into them, not having to worry about, you know, ruining your cement or, or ripping stuff up or things like that. What is it, Max? What is it? What do you see? Huh? Old Max, the garden protector, must have a scent of something because he has got his nose to the grindstone trying to find it. Over here, we have some cucumber and some squash. And if you can see this straw bale down in here, that is already quite decomposed. So that's the, uh, the uh, downfall. And yet an advantage too is as they break down over the seasons you may have to move them around and uh, readjust them because they're gonna start kind of getting all cattywampus on you as you see over here on this one this side is kind of breaking down a little bit faster than this side so there's a hole in here that you see so you just have to be cognizant of that I keep my strings on them so it kind of gives them a little bit of extra support throughout the season Another benefit to straw bale gardening is even if what you planted inside the bales, if they don't do well, I mean, in my mind, that's completely fine because you're kind of killing two birds at the same time because you're still going to have some plants, maybe a couple little, you know, vegetables from it. That's fine. Didn't produce that the way you want it to. But while the plant is growing, the straw bale is breaking down. So that's actually creating a super, super rich, fertile compost mix for next year. After your straw bales have all been done, you know, the planting's been done, everything has been uh, reaped and sowed. Even after they sit over the winter, they're going to break down even more. So what you can do for next season is you can go into your garden area where your straw bales were and you can break them up and you can till those or just mulch those right on top of or into your soil. So it's great for that aspect because you're adding nutrients, you're creating soil and you're creating microbes and biodiversity for your new soil structure. Now, now the downfall with this is is when you're starting straw bales you need to condition them and what that means is you need to take apart you know give yourself probably two to four weeks to condition your straw bales you can't just directly plant in them you have to add a high nitrogen nutrient for the first two to four weeks until they start to break down you want the inside of your straw bales to be a little bit black material almost like compost so you can stick your hand down in it and if you see any white or black specks coming off your hand then it means it's good to be planting in so that's kind of a downfall it takes a little bit of time to get them ready and then same as well is it takes quite a bit of water and quite a bit of nutrients so if you don't have an area where you have you know lots of water you know if you're in california or somewhere like that where there's droughts it may not be conducive because even throughout the growing season i found that the straw bales they dry out a lot quicker than planting in the ground 
even though that the plants still do as good, you have to be on top of the watering even more so than when they're in the ground. Another disadvantage is um, if you aren't in a spot, in like a farming area, may be hard to find them for a good price. Um, the straw bales that we've got, we've got square bales and we found them in an area around here. You know, we got them I think for around $3 a bale. But uh, that's not to say I've, I've seen people trying to sell them for $10 a bale. So, you know, if you're in the city area and you only have maybe a, a farm store, or a co-op, or, you know, somebody on the side of the road, they may be asking a little bit more money. And depending on how much straw bales that you need, it could get pretty pricey pretty fast, you know, especially when you factor in, you have to add in for the first two, three, four weeks, all of that high nitrogen content nutrients as well. So. It's better if you can find a farmer with some, some old bales that are kicking around from the season that he can't feed his animals and they're decomposing already. That would be perfect for your situation because they're already a step ahead into the game. They're already starting to break down and you might not have to add so much nutrients. So that in itself could save you a couple dollars as well. So another thing to be cognizant of when you're straw bale gardening is this is the bale that I showed you earlier. And remember how there was this little spot down in here. So there's a spot down in here that you can kind of fit your hands into. Uh, so obviously that gives room for rodents and pests. So you have to be cognizant of that. Um, we haven't had any problems so far with mice or rodents or anything destroying our crops, but it's definitely, definitely a possibility because there's room in there, nice shady area and underneath of the straw bales they could easily burrow and get down in there so you have to be you have to be realizing that there could be potential problems for moles voles and stuff like that so we're going to come around into the greenhouse and i found that the bales that i put into the greenhouse i put three bales onto the inside of the greenhouse and it was i think uh, four along this side four along that side or sorry three along this side three along that side for a total of 12 out front and three in here for a total of, we had 15 bales. But what I found is when I was uh, planting here in the greenhouse and when these bales were aging, that the ones in the greenhouse did a lot better than the ones out front. And I think that is because obviously the heat inside the greenhouse, it's gonna act like a compost system. The heat is gonna help the compost inside the bales decompress and break down more so than the bales out front. So keep that in mind if you're planting them in your greenhouse if they're in their greenhouse, nine times out of 10, they're probably gonna break down a little bit faster than when they are outside. So here's our straw bales in the greenhouse. And as you can see, they are doing absolutely awesome. Like our jalapeno plants just filled with jalapenos. This tomato plant is just got so big that it just kept falling over on itself. So the straw bales are just awesome working stuff for in the garden here. We still got the, the, the twine on them, keeping them together but just doing absolutely awesome. Peppers are doing awesome. And then we'll come up front to this last uh, straw bale right here. And as you see, the, uh, the cherry tomatoes, they're all the way up to the roof. So lots and lots of advantages and disadvantages for doing straw bale gardening. But as you can see, plants love it. Inside the greenhouse, absolutely loves it. And even the plants outside of the greenhouse, they love it too, because we have some current tomatoes over here and the plants are just absolutely massive. Our squashes are doing absolutely awesome. You can see big leaves from those. Tomatoes are bushed out. We can see that uh, we have some good size uh, tomatoes on them. Same with over here, we have some more squash starting. Lots, lots, lots of big leaves. Over here, same thing, we have our cucumbers. So they're starting to look good. Big leaves on those, super healthy. And over here, we have some pepper plants and which are doing absolutely awesome as well. Another advantage that I found with straw bale gardening is they absolutely love root crops. Um, so what I did this year is I had some beets and they say, you know, not to, uh, not to transplant your root crops, but what I did is I thinned my beets out because I wanted to do a little test. So when I was thinning my beets out, I took some beets and I planted them in the straw bales here. I already harvested them. The harvest is on my Instagram, Maple Monkey Media, if you want to check out some beets, but they're bigger than my fists. So I think with the high nitrogen content that you add into the straw bales when you're conditioning them, that really helps for transplanting root vegetables into them or even planting root vegetables into them itself. They did absolutely awesome. So we're excited to do it again next year to plant carrots, beets, and different root veggies in there. And we're gonna see how well it does. 
Because if you honestly think about it, anywhere below the top layer of the straw bale, put a little bit of soil on top when it's all ready for planting, but anything below that, the roots and, and everything for root vegetables, they can just press right down into the straw bales. No soil, nothing's gonna get in their way. There's no rocks. So it actually makes sense when you think about it. So next year we're gonna try carrots and we're gonna try some other things. And uh, you know, we're gonna get, fingers crossed, a good haul. <laughs> So over here is our carrot bed, and I'll show you what I mean right here. So our carrot bed, doing absolutely great. You can So here's our carrot bed. Our carrot bed's doing absolutely great. You can see, you know, the tops of the carrots there. They're a good size, but I'll pull this guy out. So looking at that one, you'd think you'd be a good size carrot, but I'll pull him out just to show you this is what I'm talking about. See how this is just a tiny, See how this is just a tiny little carrot? It's because it has rocks and soil. I didn't till it up enough for the uh, the carrot to get bigger further on down. So if we move this over to the straw bale, if you think about it growing into the straw bale here, that it's not gonna have any problems permeating the straw going down into this because there's nothing there. Like I can poke my hand, I can poke my hand all the way down and thinking if that were a carrot, you could be able to pull this out and it would be a nice, you know, 6, 8, 10, 12 inch long carrot as opposed to this little chode carrot. Well, y'all, I would definitely say straw bale gardening is definitely um, a positive experience for the garden. Like I say, it has its advantages and disadvantages. So you have to assess your situation on when you start your own garden. You know, what's around you? What are you planting on? Do you have cement? Do you have asphalt? Uh, you know, how can you get away with, with planting on it? So, you know, straw bales are a way that you can get away with planting on cement and asphalt. No problem. Um, I would definitely recommend it. But like I say, you have to, uh, you have to assess your garden. You have to assess the area that you have and you know the tools the money and everything that that you want to invest in your garden as well but we're definitely going to be trying it again next year so stick along lots more videos to come we're going to be working on the bus later today uh, later on down the line we're going to be getting to the cabin we're going to be building another 12 by 16 tiny house in the next month and a half so we have lots of stuff coming up lots of videos much to appreciate you all checking out the channel god bless and we'll see you next time here at maple monkey media adam signing off for the day woo, 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 woo. cheers y'all God bless.